free from desire, uh, the, the bounds of uh, 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 you know uh, ambition and so on. And then he goes on uh, a bit there to praise the old religion, 10 to 15. I'll pick that up next time. We're going to move along here to this uh, karma yoga. Uh, again, in liberty from the bonds, 19 of attachment, do your work that is to be done. For the man whose work pure attains indeed the supreme. Um, King Janna and other warriors reached perfection, line 20. In the actions of the best man, Others find the rule of their action. Their path that a great man follows becomes a guide to the world. I have no work to do in all the world, Arjuna, for these are mine. I have nothing to obtain because I have everything. He's in Brahman. He's nothing he needs. I was not bound to action, never tiring, everlasting. If ever my work had an end, these worlds would end in destruction. Confusion would reign, and so on. Fine. Let not the wise disturb the mind of the unwise in their selfish work. 26. Let him work with devotion. Even as the unwise work selfishly in the bondage of selfish work, let the wise man work unselfishly for the good of the world. Line 30. Offer to me all your works. Rest your mind on the supreme Brahman. Be free from vain hope and selfish small thoughts. And with inner peace, fight your fight. 35. And do your duty, even if it is humble, rather than another's, even if it be great. To die in one's duty is life. To live in another is, is death. 41. Set therefore your senses in harmony. Slay sinful desire. Say that the power of the senses is great, for the greater than the senses is the mind. Greater than the mind is booty, which is where the Buddha comes from, a, a kind of overall arching wisdom. And greater than reason is he the spirit in man, Atman. Know him therefore who is above booty, reason, and let his peace give you peace. Be a warrior, kill desire, and the power of the other soul. All right. What is he saying there? I think he's basically saying work well. Work evenly. Do the work that's assigned to you. Work is necessary to keep the world going. Therefore, the society needs people who do their work. It needs teachers who work well. It needs garbage men who work well. It needs warriors who work well. It needs bureaucrats who work well. It needs politicians who, who, who work well. But the thing in working is you shouldn't be working for ambition. You shouldn't be working for uh, a goal that will enrich yourself. You should work in the secretarial office, let's say, for the sake of doing that job well. And in doing that job well, and in doing it to the best of your ability, as it were, this spiritual perfection will develop. So, it is a very uh, helpful doctrine in terms of getting people through the deck. And it does teach you how to organize and discipline your mind. And I think in that regard, it's extremely positive. But on the other side, it's not going to teach you how to change the world in any way. It's going to tell you, be content with what you have. And um, if you're a garbage person, picking up garbage on the street, you should do that well. I think there's a lot to recommend that in terms of life. See, whatever the job a person has, it's really, it's really bad and, and not very pleasing or admirable to see them doing it badly. They're supposed to be picking up pieces of paper along the highway, and that's what their, their job is. And they shouldn't be sloughing off, talking to each other, and you know, laughing at their job. They should pick up all the pieces of paper. And what they're saying is if you do that job well, you will attain that evenness. Uh, which is the same as a kind of spiritual uh, enlightenment and well-being. That's the best I can do for you on Karma Yoga. See you next time. We'll finish this book, hopefully, next time. Then we'll talk about an exam after that.